Hi all, let's have a look at game 45 in the TSEX Season 15 Super Final match. So Stockfish playing white in game 45, D4, 9 to F6. So there's 100 games in total, so approaching the halfway line of the match at this stage. So C4, uh, this is the opening book given. B6, slightly odd B6, and now really getting into odd territory, F3, Knight C6, end of book. In this position, uh, d6 has occurred in a very high level game. Uh, Nakamura against Maxim uh, Vachia Le Grave in uh, the Chesscom International Tournament of 2018. And in that game, it seemed actually uh, that Nakamura had uh, not such a difficult game. He made it look quite easy. He castled queenside uh, and uh, somehow uh, Black. Yeah, get, got into huge trouble here because of knight f5. Uh, so d6 is a problem on bishop f8, it seems. So losing the dark square bishop led to a quick knockout after bishop g5, bishop f6, with the queen coming into h6. So black had to resign here, it seems. Uh, so that, that seemed to be a pretty disastrous game with d6 at a high level. So here we have knight c6, which seems quite quirky, really. Uh, we have knight c3. Nigel Shaw apparently played this against Gary Kasparov in the St. Louis Blitz tournament of 2015. He played actually, they had a blitz match which Kasparov trounced Nigel Short. Nigel Short played e5 against Kasparov and that game saw Kasparov kind of getting uh, an interesting bind on the possession. So a quick look at a uh, sort of central form pawn there. <laughs> uh, by Kasparov, yeah, and um, yeah, this this uh, led to I think some desperation on Black's part pretty soon. Uh, Black got uh, squished over here on the on the king side, squished on the queen side. And Kasparov's about to open the a file, uh, so this looks like a pretty squishing game on both sides of the board, and uh, didn't last too long from here so that was the end of that one so yeah not too inspiring the stem games around this opening so uh leela tries <clears throat> d5 and now we have queen a4 queen d7 c takes d5 knight takes knight takes queen takes e4 so clearly if queen takes d4 queen takes c6 check <clears throat> so uh queen d6 is played white well, does seem to have an ideal center here after bishop e3. Um, now we have bishop d7. It doesn't seem much point in playing queen b4 check. Why it's just better, it seems, after the exchange of queens. We have bishop d7, d5, knight a5, hitting the queen. Queen drops back. And now e5. If black tries to chip away at the d5 pawn, White could play like this, knight e2, and then castle queenside. And this seems to be really good for white. Even casting queenside is actually uh, quite palatable in this particular scenario. This is just a fictional continuation, just to give you an idea. Black's king could be worse if it doesn't manage to castle there. So uh, e5, knight e2, bishop e7, knight c3, black castles at rook c1. A6, queen d2, uh, queen f6, bishop d3. White does seem to be super comfortable in this position. Knight b7. Leela is trying to use the c5 square perhaps. Uh, not here though. Bishop d6, just keeping a grip on things for the moment. Knight e2, queen e7, king h1. Knight c5 now. You might consider f5. It does seem to run into e takes and then white taking over the e4 square, for example, like this with a huge advantage. Uh, that would be structurally terrible for black. So uh, f5 seems out of the question. Knight c5, bishop drops back, a5. Again, just to quickly check out f5. Uh, white's mechanism is essentially the same. Take on f5 and uh, build up here. Uh, for knight e4 to be very effective. Uh, so a5, knight c3, a4, rook fe1, rook fc8, bishop d1, rook ab8, 
bishop e2, a3, b3, b5, rook ed1, h6. And uh, at this point in the game, this section of the game, it seems as though uh, Stockfish is kind of celebrating its good position. It doesn't really need to do anything. Uh, so we have, uh, let's have a look at what happened. Some, some moves which don't seem to really do much. Okay, there's a fret there and the bishop just retracts. Now here, it does seem to be a definite campaign of gripping the light squares with h4. So the light squares are starting to be gripped in this position. So the targets f5 and g6 as a precursor to potentially installing this knight on g6, which is a precursor in itself. If a knight's on g6, it's exerting pressure on e5 for f4. So that's basically white's plan here in a nutshell with the benefit of hindsight. We see white fiddling around with bishop a7 though a little bit. Um, fiddling around here. Now this light square campaign continues. So the knight now is ready to go to g6. Uh, so we see a knight's journey, knight e2, knight g3. So you're wondering how how is it going to g6? Okay, let's have a look. Now this is particularly curious to me as well. <laughs> I actually asked a few times people if they thought what what was this about again? Because I didn't watch this live uh, that much, but the king for some reason stockfish uh, is celebrating maybe one of the greatest positions it's had all match. Uh, and it just wants to put its king on h4 for a laugh, it seems. I have no idea why the king uh, just goes to h4 and then comes back. Uh, basically, soon, you're about to see this, the king's about to go to h4 and then come back. Uh, as well as fiddling around with bishop a7. Okay, a, a key moment here to ask if bishop takes c5 is any good for black. Uh, not particularly. The knight can come to f5 here with advantage. And white's uh, very, very comfortable. And f4 can even be played there. And knight comes eventually to g6 like that. And the queen side's dropping off. If black goes passive trying to protect b5, then this is just really good uh, for white. This kind of thing with e5 break coming up. So yeah, knight a6. And then we get more high level shuffling. But ridiculously, the king comes to h4. Uh, so one observation, maybe it's some form of uh, <laughs> prophylaxis uh, for the king not to be exposed to any of these bishops or something. I, I just find it um, a celebration of, of some sort by Stockfish parading the king to h4. Anyway, it comes all the way back to h2. Goes to h3 again, goes to h4. I think Stockfish didn't want this game to be video annotated. But uh, I think Stockfish underestimated. I can, ju I can just skip its ridiculous moves to get to the crunch time, which we're all in interested in. in uh, so the knight now reroutes to that g6. So the whole, the whole knight g6 <laughs> uh, campaign has been obscured by ridiculous looking bishop a6 and, and king moves but the knight is establishing itself it seems pretty soon on g6 for the f4 plan that does seem to the underlining uh, plan the underlying plan that we can perhaps learn from for our own games if we can just uh, cut to the chase <laughs> distill the good stuff here is the good stuff white's in a better position now for the f4 break it's one of those uh, kind of rare occasions uh, that leader is the one really without any useful pawn breaks and Stockfish is making its pawn break as effective as possible. Um, should the king be on g3 though? Let's see. Uh, so we have this uh, potential attack and now self-destructing c5. This is the start of uh, a, a, a wonderful uh, self-destruct mechanism Leela invokes here with c5. Uh, if Leela doesn't do anything, if bishop f8, f4, and this is really quite uh, devastating. Uh, so for example, bishop d6, f takes, and you can see the knight supporting e5 here. Uh, we can do this, and e5, and the thing is, e5 opens up this diagonal. So black's king is actually in uh, dire straits here. Uh, so this kind of continuation, for example, the king just gets uh, 
chat mated. So there, there are some of the dangers. Uh, let's have a quick look at this again. So before this, this crunch c5. So bishop f8, f4, bishop d6. On e takes f4. Uh, here's another scenario. Well, that knight would drop if b b4. If rook b7, the bishop just gets onto this diagonal, basically. Uh, parks on that diagonal for e5 to be more effective. And uh, basically, yeah, bishop f5 is destructive. Yeah, the, the light squares in general are very vulnerable, and black could end up losing material at least, if not getting mated. Uh, on 87, king g8 instead of... Uh, Rook b7 here, just just to explore this scenario. Uh, again, the bishop coming to this diagonal is key, it seems, and building up for e5 potentially uh, soon. Uh, so clear advantage, whatever happens. So this is the start of a self-destruct mechanism by Leela, uh, and in fact, d6 now, which gives a hook to the knight on the e7 square, and now f4 here, c4. Now, so one pawn's given up by Leela, just given up. But there is a threat of knight takes e4 check. Uh, I think Stockfish is going to see this tactic. Uh, if b takes, uh, then d7 is good. For example, like this, f takes, and then bishop takes c4. Bishop f7 is pretty painful. Look at this. The queen's been run out of squares. And then knight takes e5, knight takes d7, devastation. So uh, knight c5, so one pawn down, but Leela's about to sacrifice some more pawns uh, pretty soon. Here, another pawn down, two pawns down. And in fact, there's a third pawn being hit here, and Leela just gives that up. There's no point protecting it. The, the position's busted, basically. If, say, Leela had protected it with rook a8, b6, uh, taking on e5 is, is very good. But if, if 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 queen d8, then bishop c4 is strong as a, as a tactic here, where the king uh, is in big trouble, or, or d7, and stuff like that. Uh, for example, like this is a mop-up of black's uh, pawns around the king. With that pawn on d6, this stuff is devastating. So, uh, okay, so uh, we have rook c8, so another pawn, three pawns down. It's all over by the shouting, it seems. But... Uh, Stockfish does make use of the king on a weird h4 square soon because of this invasion to the second rank. Uh, perhaps this is another instructive kind of tactical theme uh, Stockfish has emphasised here. Uh, gives up a2, by the way. Um, uh, to, it doesn't really matter about giving up a2. It, it's to seize control of this and get a rook to the 7th or 8th. Uh, so rook b2... So still two pawns up, devastating position, uh, with rook on the seventh. The queen is trying to cooperate with the rook. Uh, so last chance saloon for black hair. Queen a1, but now the back row is invaded with the deadly threat of checkmate on h8. So Stockfish parries that with bishop g8. Uh, on queen e1 check, king h3. Uh, so, you know, that's going to be checkmate if... We'll, we'll see the bishop g8 defense pretty soon now. Bishop g8 in the main line of the game. So bishop g8. But now uh, queen f1. Queen a3 check. And here uh, black uh, would be great if white played king h2. Because after queen e3 that pin piece is pretty nasty. And this will be all over for white. But uh, stockfish is not that bad tactically. And plays king h4. So maybe there's some sort of lesson, in fact, that the king is quite good sometimes on h4 here, away from the glare of the pieces. And white is the first to get the killer attack here in this position now. Um, so we have queen e3, and now knight f8 check, king h8. On knight takes f8, queen takes f8, uh, this position, the king finds safety, it seems, like this. And that's just desperate for black. There's, they'll run out of checks. Uh, so knight f8, king h8, queen f5, threatens the juicy queen h7 check, believe it or not. 
I want to just, just show you that on the board. Queen h7 is a nice, nice tactic with double check and mate there. So uh, Queen f5, we have the desperate g5 that's taken. This has all been calculated by Stockfish. Queen d2, the game ended here. Uh, on Queen takes e2, then g7 check. It's all pretty much in the realms of forcing move calculations. Um, so Queen d2, the game could have carried on if the game had carried on g7 anyway uh, taking on d7 check uh, check it all runs with check uh, to lead to a checkmate in any case so uh, yeah a pretty devastating win there by Stockfish um, I, I found it more than mysterious uh, Stockfish's uh, kind of celebration phase of this game where it, the pawn break wasn't so much always uh, made more effective as if to kind of just see if black would weaken her own position if Leela would which Leela did eventually you know the, there was nothing to do here white was going to play f4 with great effect so Leela just exploded uh, losing uh, three pawns in a row basically um, but yeah I, I thought uh, it was an iron grip on the position uh, a nice light square control and then an occupation uh, rerouting the knight to g6 to support f4 um, to try and basically open up this diagonal later so th I think there were actually some very nice instructive attacking themes uh, behind uh, Stockfish's play in this game uh, very well controlled and yeah a great celebration of, of having the pawn break and the opponent not being able to do anything an iron grip on the position uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video this game video if you did please click on the top left box which should appear shortly become a member at chessworld.net play against other youtubers you can also test yourself on the variations covered in this and other game videos from the improved menu puzzle books option which has a link to the annotated game comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe with the notification bell really appreciated thanks very much Let's quickly check out the puzzle book for this game. So if you go to chessworld.net puzzle books, you'll find uh, the puzzle book for this game is Queen's Fin Chateau Defense. I'll just filter just for mates actually on this particular one. So here, uh, okay, so Queen uh, check there. White's playing black gets mated. So after taking on E2. Uh, there's rook h8 checkmate yes coordination square <laughs> okay um now here there's a there was a cute one wasn't there queen h7 and then knight g6 is double check and mate and here i think g7 check and uh mm, um <laughs> Queen g6, queen takes, queen takes h7. Okay, yeah, uh, you can filter with what you want on this and other games, but also check out the uh, historical player uh, puzzle books. They're my favorite at the moment. So famous players, in particular, like Mikhail Tal and Bobby Fischer, if you want to check out, as well as Paul Morphy. But yeah, there's some very, very exciting ones there. I'll try and get all the world champions soon within the next few weeks definitely okay thanks so much